Hi guys, it's Allison from The Pinup Girl here with The Salon Guy On Demand. And today we're going to be talking about how to with curling irons, so let's get started. Hi guys, so now we're going to demonstrate what each curling iron does and show you proper technique to get the best curl out of each iron. We're going to start with a smaller clip iron, temperature turned up to about 400 degrees. And when I go to section my hair, I'm going to take into consideration the size of this iron. The section that you pick up from the head should never be larger or smaller than the size of the iron. That's how you know your curl is going to come out nice and even. So I'm just going to go to the top of the head so everyone can see really well. And I'm going to pick up a section of hair that matches the width of the size iron that I have. It's about a half inch. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the iron onto the hair and we're going to do one pull down as a prep step to get this hair heated and ready to bend into the shape that we want. Next thing I'm going to do is insert the iron close enough to the head but far enough so that I can start to spin. I'm going to tw twist the tails around and I'm going to turn the iron and with each turn I'm pushing onto the spring piece to loosen up the shell from the rod to allow the hair to slide through the iron. Notice that I'm staying close to the head and feeding the hair through the iron so that each piece of the hair gets heated evenly. That's going to give you a nice, even, uniform curl from top to bottom. You never want to take this iron and slide down to the end and then roll all the way up. Doing so gets even heat only to the inside or the ends of the hair and uneven heat to the outside. So feeding it through the way you learn to do it with a Marcel iron is the proper way to make sure that your curl is uniform from top to bottom. So I'm going to show you again, but I'm just going to flip up to a bigger iron. This is a three-quarter inch. So now I'm going to adjust the size of my section to match the size of my iron, just a little bit bigger, just a quarter inch bigger. I'm going to go in with the iron, pull down as a prep step so I'm heated and ready to go. Insert close to the scalp and begin turning. Now each time I turn, I hit my spring piece, I loosen the shell from the rod so I can slide the hair through, giving even heat to each section of the hair, making sure that my ends go all the way in and I don't see any ends hanging out, using my comb to protect the client's head from the iron. And then I'm going to click and remove this hair from the iron. And you can see we have an even curl from top to bottom. I'll show you one more time, and this time I'm going to use this Hot Tool Ceramic Iron. This iron's a little bit different because as you can see, the shell piece is shorter than the rod piece. This, is get, this little extension here is giving me the extra space that I need on long hair to wind it around and hold it so that the heat can get to the entire strand. I'm going to turn this one all the way up. Like I said in a previous video, ceramic irons are a little bit kinder to the hair and the heat is not delivered as directly. So I like to turn my heat up a little bit more when I pick up my ceramic iron. So again, this iron is bigger. We're working with one inch. So I'm going to pick up a section that reflects the size of my iron. I can go a little bit bigger here. Process is going to be the same. Putting the hair into the iron, pulling it down, applying a little bit of heat to prep. And then I'm gonna come back towards the scalp and insert and start my turning of the iron, feeding the hair through so the heat gets to each piece of the hair evenly. Take your time with this. Building good curling iron techniques is essential to the outcome of your style. If you have sloppy prep techniques, you're gonna have a sloppy end result every time. I'm paying special attention right now. I'm just clicking this spring piece a little bit more to make sure that the ends of the hair are disappearing underneath that shell. Now that all the hair is in, I'm going to roll down and just hold for a second to allow it to heat through, using my comb to protect the client's scalp from the heat, of course. Make sure that it's nice and heated through. You can give it a little tap to make sure. And then I'm going to click my spring and use my comb to help push the hair off of the iron. And again, you see, we have a nice even curl from top to bottom. So now we're gonna talk about two alternative ways to get a curl into your style. And the first is gonna be the wand iron. A wand iron is just no clip, no shell coming away, it's just the heated rod. 
Same rules apply as with our traditional irons. You want to pick up a section that's equal to the size of your wand. So we're going to go ahead and pick up about an inch wide section here because that's the size of my wand iron. And your hand, your free hand, is going to do the job of what the clip of a regular iron would do. You're going to put the wand in close to the scalp and you're going to just wind the hair all the way around, getting as close as you can, holding, and then just let the hair spill off. And there you go, is your wand curl. Another way to get a curl into the hair is with a flat iron. Sometimes when you use a flat iron, it's okay to pick up a bigger section of hair. So if your client is looking for some kind of beachy waves or a looser curl, or you're looking to get it done a little bit quicker, a flat iron might be a good choice for you. So I'm going to pick up about an inch wide section here, just so you can get a good, a good view of how this works. I'm going to run it down the hair one quick time, just as a prep step. And then I'm going to insert the hair into the iron, come away from the scalp a little bit, and then I'm going to do one half turn with my iron. Speed is key here. You want to go nice and slow. Let me grab this tail out of the way so you can see what's happening. You want to go nice and slow, giving a chance for the hair to get heated all the way through. And then you'll see what happens when we drop it out of the iron. I like to kind of catch it so I can give it its direction and let it drop. So there you have that flat iron curl. It's a little bit different from the curls that we did before because you have a section at the top that's kind of flat before we made our first turn where the curl starts to come into play. So there's a couple of alternative ways to get some curls into your style. Okay, so now that we know how to use the irons properly, we're gonna talk for a minute about curl direction. This is where you're gonna decide which direction you want the curl to face in accordance with how you want your finished style to be. For example, if the client is looking for soft beachy waves that go away from her face or towards the back of her head, you wanna make sure that when you insert that iron to make the curl, you're turning it towards the back of the head. So what does that mean? That means that my shell piece, this piece that moves here, is gonna to be towards the front because I know I'm gonna be spinning that way towards the back of the head. So I'm just going to go ahead and get this curl in so you can see one curl going towards the back of the head. And if you look at the base of the section, you can see where the curl starts to turn and it's turning this way towards the back. So if I'm setting this woman's hair to go backwards, all of my curls would be facing this direction. So alternatively, you can go the opposite direction if you want the hair coming forward. Um, not a lot of people wear their hair forwards towards their face these days, it's true, um, but you should know how to curl in both directions so that it fits your style appropriately. So if I was going to curl towards the face instead of towards her back this time, I'm going to be sure to flip my iron once and insert it so that the shell is at the back because now I'm turning towards you, towards the face. Same curl technique is going to apply, it's just that when I inserted it, the curl direction is going the opposite way. So let me just click to get my ends in to complete my curl. And then when it comes out, you'll see what I mean. Here's our curl. And if you look at the base of the curl, you can notice that the curl starts to turn and our curl direction is towards the face. So this is really important for a regular style that the client's gonna wear down and flowy, as well as your prep step for an updo. Think about a style that comes to the back and needs to sweep towards a chignon or something happening in the back. You wanna make sure your curls are directed appropriately. It's really hard to have your curls facing the wrong way and then fight with them to bring them back. They're just gonna kind of flip around and boing around in a weird way. So curl direction is really important and a good tip to remember when you're setting up your client. So here's a tip for working with your curling irons. You wanna make sure that you're always working with a carbon or hard rubber comb. Our curling irons get really hot. Our flat irons go up to 450 degrees sometimes. And if we're using the comb to work with the curls or to protect the client's head from the heat, you wanna make sure that whatever comb we're using isn't gonna melt underneath that pressure. So I hope you guys enjoyed everything today. I hope you learned a little bit. I'm Allison from The Pinup Girl, and I'll see you again with more videos from the Salon Guy On Demand. Bye.